In this video, I'm going to describe a scaphoid fracture. Scaphoid comes from the Latin scaphoides and Greek scaphoides and essentially means boat shaped or like a bowl or like a hollow. The scaphoid is the boat shaped bone which is on the radial aspect of the proximal carpal row. It articulates with the trapezium and the trapezoid, the capitate um, medially, and also the lunate inframedially. There's an articulation with the uh, radius also. And usually, when the scaphoid fractures, it does so in the scaphoid waist. One of the problems with a scaphoid fracture is, if it's not treated properly or promptly, it can lead to avascular necrosis. And this can also be a problem even if it is treated properly. The avascular necrosis in this patient is demonstrated by the sclerosis of the proximal pole because this is the portion of the scaphoid that dies during the fracture. And there's a very good reason why that happens proximally rather than distally. And that's because the blood supply from the radial artery gives rise to both the dorsal and volar arteries. Volar is the other name for palmar. So the dorsal artery uh, supplies 80% of the scaphoid and when it's involved in a fracture, it can disrupt the blood supply. Now, depending on where the fracture is with relation to this artery determines whether or not avascular necrosis is gonna take place. The volar artery supplies 20% of the scaphoid and is usually unaffected by the waist fracture. And so this can often lead to avascular necrosis if it's poorly treated or not promptly treated. One important thing that should be said about scaphoid fractures. If clinically a scaphoid fracture is suspected, so the patient has a very tender anatomical snuff box, and the x-ray doesn't show a fracture, you should treat it as if it is a fracture and re-x-ray in 10 to 14 days. This is accepted practice because sometimes the fracture can become visible on the 10 to 14 day film. Very important.